So, uh, CES, driving home, it's a sad day, the sky is gray. Uh, it was over too soon, but it wasn't over too soon, because honestly our feet were killing us and we were about ready to die, so it, all good things must come to an end. So, I figured we'd just, you know, really send this thing off in style, just do a what our picks were, maybe like top three from CES. So, Mario, what do you think? Well, uh, everybody was very RGB, um, but I don't know if that's really, you know, a, a top reason for me to, to jump on anything. Um, because for me, it's a little bit practicality. Uh, so I really love Gale. Um, I don't know. I don't know what, the, what my numbering system would be, but we'll just just say a generic three. Um, Gale was fun because of all of their interchanging parts, pretty much. Um, yeah, it's. I mean, I've like I said, I've seen. Yeah, it's camera's drifting away. I've seen. Uh, interchanging switches on some keyboards but the fact that they give you those switches so you can decide is kind of amazing yeah um, so uh, Gale was definitely in my top two and, and my top three as well because it's like top three two but it, you know I was having trouble figuring out how to throw it but yeah I the interchangeable and customization I've I've seen that term thrown around. They actually deliver on it, is, is my thoughts on that. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, let's see. The... Who else was doing something that I... I'll go ahead and add... No, I'll just go ahead and add AMD to my list. I really like all of the potential, all the, the features that Ryzen's going to offer, uh, even though there's no there's no statistic. And let's be honest, I don't have nearly the background in, in hardware to, to, to make the kind of claims that, um, you know, it's like, oh, this is the greatest thing ever. Uh, but, you know, the fact that they, they sat down with us and, and really just explained out, like, all of these uh, optimization things that they're um, just trying to make it so everything power regardless of what you're doing it's adjusting to make sure that if you have the technology to make this cooler we're be the, our chip will be like ah sure throw out more power throw out more you know it's just it it adapts with the environment and uh, I, I appreciate that the future is finally trying to be you know fixing itself I feel like there's two reasons why people overclock one is for the sheer joy of overclocking which I do some of that um, I do enjoy overclocking, but the other reason is to get every bit of practical performance you can get. And that's more the bigger reason why I overclock, which is why I'm really excited about Ryzen as well. Because I, I'm like, it, it does take a huge step out. It's like, you know what? I'm just going to put a super awesome cooler on this thing, and then I'm going to let the chip do the rest of the work and enjoy that performance. So, I mean, I'm hoping to get to review it when it comes out so I can see how well it works in, in, in application. But even then, it just it sounds, it feels and sounds like it's going to be really good. I AMD's not my in my three, but I it, not because I don't feel like they deserve to be there. It's always hard when you make these lists and choices anyway. Yeah. So what, what can I say? Yeah, <laughs> I for me, um, my problem whenever I was building things is that it's like Intel is always really stable. I could not afford it. Um, and AMD, it's like, yeah, it was very finicky, but it gave you all the options to overclock. I can actually do something and not feel like I'm going to break it, it sounds like, <laughs> when I'm with uh, how Ryzen's going right now. So. I feel like AMD is, you know, still the one that you can afford because of performance, but even stability has, has gotten a lot better. You know, their chip side's still finicky, but I some of that's, I feel like, not even AMD because their older chips have been around around for so long and their market share is so low some people just don't care if their stuff works well because there's just not enough of a market for it and that's kind of a bummer 
that will most certainly change. I mean, I'm confident that's going to change with Ryzen, so <laughs> not to worry about it. Um, but, and pretty much, uh, really just something that I caught on the corner of my eye was the, <laughs> somebody made a <laughs> steady cam for smartphones, which literally what we've been doing the entire week is running is is trying to find a way to make a smartphone look like it's the greatest technology ever uh because which you know there's some moments not quite there but for a lot of it really pulled it off i think yeah and you know we've gotten to a future where i mean you know there's commercials so it's like all oh, this was shot on this phone you know and the fact that somebody's building a steady cam for the phone too kind of just makes it so uh, they made an entry level price uh, for um, people to have that technology without having to like you know jerry rig a whole bunch of uh, PVC or wood so that you have this giant weight below your camera to try to like mock do that and they actually just built a whole gyroscope system that like just literally you can just do this and everything stays in the same place yeah and that is fantastic uh i believe the company was tiffin yeah i don't remember the company um, name for some reason i didn't catch it and they got a kickstarter um but yeah that's and it's like 140 if you jump in while it's on a kickstarter so like it's so far as steady cams go it's you're not going to get a better price yeah and they're, um, they're using a battery operated yeah, that's how they're doing it because there isn't enough weight normally but with the battery operation the weight helps counterbalance it so that it can use right basically you can a just, gyroscope to make sure that the camera stays where it is yeah and they just got some some uh magnet weight things to put at the bottom of it so that you can get the exact balance of whatever your phone is to uh, the bottom of the weight and then you can like if you wanted to do an angle up down it would stay in place Word to end on there. <laughs> so, you know, guys, when we when we talk about using a cell phone, like we're literally meaning we're trying to do this. So here's the deal. We're both guys who have wives. I know that seems impossible for me. I've seen the virginity comments on my on my videos. I know that seems impossible, but it's true. I have a wife, I have two kids, he has two kids, you know. So we're like it's not just that we're trying to do this with phones for the fun of it. It's like, this is the yeah, thing we, we can afford. have no money. Yeah, no money. So, so it's like, yeah. get a phone with a free upgrade. So right now, <laughs> you know, we're running a setup with, uh, you know, just a $50 shotgun mic and then a $20 lighting thing, which you saw in the second half of anything that we did while we yeah, were Yeah, that first day we, we, we didn't have it and we knew, knew we needed it. So we got it on the, by the second day did help a lot yeah it's nice fry's electronics is the place of dreams uh fry's electronics you know i've been to micro center and fry's and they're both great i like micro center a lot because they have a lot of stuff too but fry's is the one that just has the presentation down and maybe it's just las vegas fries but because that's the only fries i've been to is the one in las vegas i've been to micro centers in denver and i think one i've been to micro centers but i don't remember where the other one was and both of the micro centers that I've been to felt like they're just a, you know, kind of bare bones on the building part of it. Like they've got all the the, the the selection, but their presentation is a little bland because it's like they're trying to keep the building cost down. Fry's is like the one that says, "You walked into a store, <laughs> you know, we're gonna we're gonna impress you." So the last thing I want to say since I did my three was. Um, the runner-up is the one that didn't have anybody telling me if I could buy it. Uh, is that translucent side panel? <laughs> yeah, that is so. That, that, Intel's that is animated, yeah. and if that's something that legitimately can exist, yeah, who wouldn't want that? It was pretty funny because we're like, I get to the Intel booth, and I'm all like, hey. I want you to tell me some details about KB Lake, because you know, if you guys follow my my actual written stuff on Pure Clock, you know I've I've ripped on Intel for that performance boost in KB Lake, and everybody else has too. I'm not the only one. And then I talked to AMD, and I felt like getting to understand what the engineers do 
kind of made me feel like a jerk. So I tried to ask somebody, and the first guy I talked to, he's like, well, I think it has a 20 meg, and I'm just sitting here like, no man, it does not have a 20 meg cache. You, what are you doing at this booth? You don't, he was literally at that booth to sit in the chairs and play games when other people weren't. <laughs> like, I don't know if that's, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm inferring a little bit, but like, literally the guy told us nothing, didn't know much about the dark texture. Yeah, pretty much, unlike a lot of the other booths, Intel people, it was just, they were hired to do whatever the specific job they were supposed to do at their booth. So yeah. if somebody was literally just there to put an Oculus Rift on somebody's head, that's all, it wasn't something that they were going to get questioned about and they weren't expecting to get questioned about. Yeah. Somebody's, uh, it's like nobody was an, nobody felt like an expert in their particular uh, <laughs> thing. And, you know, that's, and I can't say everybody, you know, I don't, I don't want to, you know, make any of the other parts of it look bad. It's just the problem is we were running around trying yeah. to find anything about Optane or Cape Flip. So, yeah. And there was wasn't... Nobody. There wasn't an Optane demo there. No, it wasn't, there it wasn't their fault because um, if we had actually had an appointment, there was literally a guy who was there who could have talked about it, but, but we missed them because this yeah. was the last day he was there. And, and I couldn't even, was, with my schedule, couldn't even get to the other convention center to make an appointment and the other problem is, is the contacts I got from them last year turned out not to be the hardware contacts at all. So then I got two new email addresses this year of people I can actually contact so that I can have better future time to make appointments. So, so hopefully... Yeah, literally everything yeah. was based on whether or not we had contacts to talk to somebody. But we did find somebody that did actually know. And finding out that Intel was optimizing for 4K streaming so that your processor isn't being used is actually really good. It's not something everybody's going to use, but that I see the importance in that. So it was nice to get a get a get a good idea of there's a reason why KB Lake exists and it doesn't deserve the crap it's been getting, even from me. So now that being said, though, guys, if you don't do a lot of 4K streaming and you own a Sky Lake or even a Devil's Canyon or whatever, just stick with it. There's yeah, no reason to upgrade. You're good. Yeah. So well, I better get to my three then. So. I, I will, I'll go ahead and honorable mention, though. I would have to agree with the AMD thing. You know, just, just running into this guy who is so passionate oh, about... Oh, fantastic. Yeah. He's so passionate about Ryzen that he's almost in tears trying to describe it to us. And he can't tell us stuff, and I'm trying to ask him stuff like, look at man, not on a you verified fact, but come on, just tell me what's going on. Give me the wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Just, just tell me. I'll run with it. And it took him a bit because everybody's trying to get a number and AMD's not going to give a number because they're not ready. Their, their architecture needs to be finalized. And here's the thing that I realized after the fact. They're going to give us, they're going to give us numbers when the reviewers give numbers. That's a bold move. They're saying, nope, we are so confident we're going to just send this to the reviewers and they are going to give you the real numbers. Kind of a gutsy move on their part because reviewers tend to be really... That, that, that I think they're just so confident that they've nailed it. Honestly, it was that confidence that sold me. I'm, I'm excited now about Horizon. I will be disappointed if it doesn't deliver because now I, I have confidence that it's going to. So, pretty, but we also got some gigabyte people telling us it, that it was delivering on their end too. So, we're really not concerned anymore. Looking like a really great PC market coming up this year. So AMD honorable mention. I I don't. It's not that I didn't want to pick them, but because there's not a lot we, that we can see, it's kind of uh, you know harder for me to put. So of course you know Gale's already mentioned. They were definitely on my list. I'm gonna have to put Enermax on my list of top three. That I think it was the Saber Ray was the case. That case was gorgeous, and mainly because that's what every case should be doing. They. Now, that being said, I wasn't, as excited as I was about RGB, I was surprised how little RGB ended up mattering in the end, but it still mattered for a lot, for some of my stuff. But yeah. but the save array, it pretty. wasn't just the RGB, it was beautiful, but it was also the fact that they made sure each fan had the 12 LED green going around. That looks fantastic, I love that. So then it makes the RGB effect that much better. But, oh man, those those panels, and the that liquid- should be cool, standard. Yeah. 
standard and the liquid cooling support tons of space inside it's just one of those cases that you just look at and you know it's going to be a good case um i'm hoping to get a review on that one guys honestly i just tell you right now because and if Enermax can I, I will review it because they, they they did such a good job in that case that case you know it was because they were sharing a space with gigabyte it's like everybody was just ignoring them and i'm like you guys don't know what you're missing they also had their lepa fans out those lepa fans doing those designs is fantastic you want something unique that that gets people turns people's heads put one of those fans that are doing the designs people are going to eat that up and then the reservoirs the reservoirs look great i oh, love those reservoirs i know that people have done color reservoirs and stuff but Enermax has just looked so good i, I felt like they're, you know, I'm excited about them stepping into the water cooling market because I think they're doing a good job already. So, Enermax, great. So, I don't know if I got B-roll of it, but uh, one of the one of their reservoirs and liquid cooling was sort of looked like the uh, Ninja Turtle, like, ooze from, like, the... Uh... Yeah, I think you did, and I think I overlaid the B-roll because the, the shot wasn't showing it good enough, so I went ahead and overlaid that little bit of the B-roll. Yeah, so, but... Yeah. But that, and they also had like these um, fan grates that pretty much look like you know sewer lids. You know? <laughs> so like it just it was it was a fun collection of things. Yeah. But so TCRI. That was the TCRI. Yep, that's, that's right. That's what I was trying to remember. That's right. All right, but yeah, my my last pick, um, Enermax Gale. Gale did a great job. Just yeah guys those peripherals fantastic being able to customize whether you want a tactile switch a clicky switch or just a speed switch and because here's the other thing about that guys they include a certain number of switches in that in that package which means like okay i want some speed switches on just these but i'm going to keep some more typing or clicky switches on these you can kind of just customize the keyboard how you want yeah. that's that's a level that and you don't have to just buy them you're get, you're going to get a certain number so this with the package it, that's really great but yeah. deep deep cool deep cool got me oh uh, yeah yeah deep cool got me i mean first off I when I when I reviewed the captain I was like well this is my favorite looking cooler then the Kraken came out right after that and I was like okay well now this is my favorite now deep cool's got RGB on those captains and I'm like oh, uh, I just I'm sorry I can't get over the look of like that nuclear reactor with the tube and with the color changing that that sold, sold me on it I'm, 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 I'm good <laughs> but even then that wasn't the thing that super impressed me Every one of their cases is going to include liquid cooling loops. They're really good yeah, prices. Yeah, the price for both the case and that RGB captain is is, is fantastic. So I, I love that they're doing that. I think more people need to. Like Corsair should definitely be doing that. Like they've got coolers, they've got cases. Combine the two and save you money. It's true. You know they really should be doing that. And I hope Deep Cool puts some pressure on it to do that just because of what they're releasing on the market. Um, but yeah, and then there was the Quad Stellar guys i've been all about a good airflow case because my crossfire and sli and now all i want is a quad stellar <laughs> because it is, a, it is not the most practical case for airflow it's i say so i have good airflow don't get me wrong i think it do do really good with liquid yeah cooling. i don't know where everything you can mount in there yeah too, so. you can put four it looks like you put four 120 millimeter fans in the front well that's that's not bad but <laughs> that case Oh, watch out! We got we got turbulence. Okay, we're good. We didn't lose the camera. We didn't lose the camera. Yeah, that that quad stellar case was beautiful, and it just the tri stellar was never going to be a case I'd seriously consider because I don't I don't care for mini ITX builds. And I know, and guys, I'm not trying to say that that's bad. I know we've got some huge mini ITX fans out there, and there wasn't a lot of love. I'm sorry, guys. There wasn't. There just there just was wasn't a whole lot except for Ryzen. Ryzen's going to have some nice mini ITX boards out there, so you're going to see more with that. So you look forward to that. But as far as cases and stuff concerned, yeah, not They're not like, I know it looks big, and I just kind of scoffed because because his case is, like, impossibly huge because he just wants to be able to have, like, arm room while he's putting in. A, yeah, well, it's a, a core V71 so. thermal take. Of course, it's got to have room. I also needed to have room to be able to put four 200 millimeter fans, which dramatically helped my temperatures. And I, that airflow is kind of, I'm starting to realize how important an airflow is. So, 
especially for the for my rig. So yeah, it, I needed it. But that the, tr the the quad stellar guys, that's the case that you know. I just I the the Borderlands term, you know, just it's gonna make you one of those. So you would think after running out of storage and doing all these things we did to make sure we didn't run out of storage that we quit running out of storage, but we, we kind of yeah <laughs> we kind of forgot and ran out of storage because we didn't do something. But it was all right, we were done. So that was CES 2017, awesome show. Hope you guys enjoyed the coverage. I'll catch you later.